Hey everybody, this is Thomas, uh, aka Cerulean Oak. Um, I'm in Source Filmmaker, and we're going to talk a little bit today about the Graph Editor, a, uh, a very complex but powerful tool built into the, uh, the software. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen a lot of the videos that's been made by Valve already, and they touch briefly on the Graph Editor, but it, it really is a powerful tool that, um, that deserves more time um, devoted to it, especially for someone that wants to create custom animation, um, something really specific. Um, and, you know, a lot of times you can do that with puppeteering and the, um, the game engine itself, but, it, you know, there's just so much you can do. So I just wanted to create these videos to talk more about the graph editor, and I'll, I'll create hopefully a lot of these um, to go over all the stuff that you can do. At the uh, for the moment, I just want to talk about the basics um, using a very simple demonstration. Uh, I created this video here. Pull it up. This is a bouncing ball. Very exciting. Look at it go. Um, items from engineer items, in case you ever wanted a soccer ball in your video, I found it there. But yeah, this is uh, not using any in-game tools. This is just the graph editor. This is just keyframes and lines and math, <laughs> uh, making a pretty realistic uh, looking bouncing ball. So I'll show you how to make that and I would encourage you to uh, do this, uh, try and recreate it yourself because it's, uh, it, you'll get a good handle on how things work. First of all, let's talk about keys themselves. Obviously you know about the timeline, you know how to move around in it, that sort of thing, how to tab. Um, hopefully you know your hotkeys, QWERTY, uh, for the, uh, the tools here. You'll mostly just be using the select key, honestly, when you're in the keyframe, at least that's how I find things. Um, the move tool, you can usually just use the middle mouse button um, to do a lot of the stuff. See, it says even says middle mouse. So I usually just stay in select for the most part. Um, and of course, up here, you're going to be uh, switching between these guys. Oops. First of all, let's choose our ball. Animation set editor, root transform. And... Oh, that's why. There we go. So here we go, our bouncing ball. And you can see the motion there. And down here, it looks like just a mess. So first of all, we're going to choose a specific um, value that we want to uh, to look at one at a time. Because honestly, looking at more than one line, it's like, what's the point? <laughs> uh, let's look at position Z, which is up and down. You can press the F key uh, to view everything. Uh, really fast hot key for viewing screen um, or getting an idea of the overall shape of your lines. You can select specific keys, press the F key and it'll show you just those keys. Uh, unselect, press F again to go back out. Uh, and then you can see when we choose a key, and by the way if you're not familiar with what keys are, you press the M key, it creates a little bookmark and you can tab between them with the brackets to the right of the P key. It makes it really easy to toggle between them. Uh, but what a key is, it's basically a point in time that creates um, a value. And the software basically calculates how to get from point A to point, point B um, automatically and usually with just a straight line or some kind of like it looks like the default in the sor uh, Source Filmmaker is, uh, is spline. Which is fine, it makes for nice fluid animation but it also makes things look kind of messy by default and that's when you can get into the graph editor and you know make everything look all nice. Uh, first of all, let's talk about flat tangents. Flat tangents are extremely useful. Um, once I figure out how, I'll, I'll make it so that it makes flat tangents by default anytime I keyframe things. Um, the, uh, the reason for it is that it's a slow in, slow out. You have a value, for example, the ball bouncing. You know, it's not flat at all here, very sharp, bounces up, and then it slows it's going up, 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 and then you notice it's not going up very much anymore. It's going very slow, and then back down it goes very fast. And I don't want you to get the wrong impression from this shape. The left to right is time, whereas in the left to right in the video is position Y. So, for example, if I was to get rid of this keyframe here, which is, you know, the ball being over on the right, if I was to delete, delete that, now the ball is still bouncing but just on the left side. So here in position Z, you can still see same shape, but the ball is bouncing up and down because this is a representation of position Z over time, not over left to right. So I want to put that back. There we 
go. Back to the way it was, back to here. All right. So the other types of tangents uh, is linear. So if I switch to linear, you'll notice all of a sudden we have a straight line. If I was to make um, all of these tangents linear, they're just going to bounce back and forth in a straight line. And this can be useful, but in terms of animation, it um, all of a sudden we lose that sense of gravity, that slowing and stopping. It goes immediately up, immediately down. It's kind of like it's bouncing off of a wall, and it's just going really fast, and you can see that reflected again in a little helpful green circle thing. Uh, so, you know, that's what linear er, uh, linear um, <laughs> keys are for, for quick uh, bouncing from one point to another point. The, uh, and a good example of using that would be, you know, the ball bouncing off of the ground. We want that linear key so that it can immediately go one direction and then into another direction with uh, very little change. Um, you know, one side of the tangent pretty much isn't affecting the other is a good way to put it. A spline would be a, basically the same thing as a flat tangent where both sides are the same. By middle mouse button here you can see I can move it and now it's kind of more of a spliny shape. It's not flat. Well, technically it's flat. But you can see what I mean when I select all of them and then choose spline. You'll notice everything kind of gets all very uh, fluid. And it looks nice in the picture but then when I do it here in the motion instead of that nice bounce, see that nice bounce there. And we get here and it's kind of slowing as kind of like it's it's brushing the ground like, hey there ground. And uh, and then it's brushing again. So it kind of just looks like some weird mind control thing, like someone's controlling the ball and it's floating through the air like the sniper's off off screen and he's I don't know, doing some sort of voodoo. Uh, and that's spline. And then of course step which everyone might think is useless, but it's actually really good for a couple of things. Um, and essentially all it does is it changes the, <laughs> in this example, it looks terrible. But what it does, it's how you get an immediate change in value. So it's pretty much like there's no line. I mean, it shows a line, but there's pretty much no line. Uh, you're just getting one key happening, and then at a certain point in time, something else. A good example of this would be camera change. Um, you know, in... Um, the nice thing about Source Filmmaker is you don't have to do that because they, they break everything up into shots. But there might be a, what's a good example? Well, I mean, you know, any situation in which something changes uh, dramatically. Um, this actually could be a switch, like turning IK, uh, inverse kinematics on and off. Um, uh, you know, if you wanted someone to be holding a cup and having that cup just kind of stick to the object, but then after a certain point in time he throws the object, you'd be able to, you know, use the step tool for that. What I like to use step for is mostly planning. If I just want to do pose to pose animation, like I've got the this guy pointing at this point in time, and then all of a sudden he's pointing over here at this point in time, um, you know, that would give me the ability to um, plan that out, and then animate around those poses. But enough about the keys. I hope I'm not boring you. I just wanted to go over those basics. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and make a ball. So let's go out of the shot and create a new shot. From the graph editor, we can see nothing is happening. And we're just going to go ahead and recreate what I did before. So first of all, let's select the ball. Actually, the ball should be still selected, I hope. It's not. So let's go ahead and select it. All right. So by default, it's over here on the right. And let's just say at 10 seconds, and by the way, I can use the left and right arrows to go between frames. Uh, we're going to have it go to the right. And now, if we look at position Y, we've made that change. And by default, we're going to get that flat tangent into a linear tangent. I don't know. Oh, that's that pesky move tool that I never like it being on. So we've got a, um, a linear tangent here and a flat tangent here. So we get a slow out slowly and then it's a regular speed. So that's why you see, uh, if, for those of you that have not taken physics, any a straight line on a graph indicates a steady force. 
uh, whereas a curve graph indicates an acceleration or a de deceleration. So we've got an acceleration. It's slowly moving away from this stopped position at value 27 points or whatever it is. Yeah, 27.6. And it's eventually going to end up at negative 32.46, which is what just the value we ended up with. It doesn't have to be a round number. It's really not important. Uh, if I change this to flat, it will be a slow in, slow out. So here it's slowing to start and then going a steady space across and then slowing down and stopping. If I was to choose linear, then brackets, there you go. see it's just going a steady face across and then it's flattening out. And then in this example, we can do the same thing. Now it's just a straight line, so there's absolutely no acceleration, no deceleration, just a steady ball going across the screen. Well, that's not what we want. We do want it, let's just say, for example, it's moving steady across. Someone throws this ball into the screen. So that's going to be a steady force. And then it's going to slowly stop. So we're going to make this guy flat. And that's pretty much all we need to do. <laughs> uh, so the left to right is done. Um, we're just going to say that friction is slowly slowing that ball down as it bounces. Now let's talk about position Z. We've already got our two keyframes. And right now they're the same value because it's not moving up or down. We're going to bracket. So what we want to do is space this out. So we'll say it's bouncing and then let's say it hits. It's, it's flying into the screen. So it's going to hit right here. So we press the M key. We'll scrub some more. And you know, if it bounced here, let's just say it bounced again, like right here. So we'll go for where the ball is right there. And get rid of this arrow. There we go. We'll press the M key. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a keyframe right in the middle. And that's going to be the height. So we're going to hold down Shift, middle mouse button, drag up. And look at that. It's not going anywhere. So, and the reason for that is the scale of the, uh, the timeline. So we can just do a quick shortcut here, put it up here. We'll say it bounces up like that. And all we have to do now is press the F button. We can see our curve properly now. It's the marvelous shortcut, the F button. Oops. And it's not in the move tool. So Q for, Q for a pointer tool. Now you'll notice that it's not quite as wide of a of a circle as we saw in the other shot. And the reason for that is I use something called uh, weighted tangents. By default, you'll see these little uh, tangents here have a, an empty circle at the end. That means that the tangent is unweighted, which means it's at a set length that the tangent is gravitating towards. If I increase that tangent using weighted tangents, I could select it, hold down the shift, middle mouse button, drag to the right, and now I've got a much wider Acceleration, so it stays put longer, and then the uh, the 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 rate at which the change happens is much sharper. So this shape is more at the degree of acceleration that gravity actually is. So we're going to leave it like that. It's a nice, pretty shape, uh, and then we want to put this other guy up here too, uh, because he is when the ball is coming in. We might even we might even put it a little higher. So. Alt button, right click to zoom out. There, like that. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just have it come from off screen. How about that? Makes things a little easier. Right there. Now it's off screen. Um, now this one here, it's still a spline tangent. So if I click the spline button, it doesn't change. If I click flat tangent, now it's flat. Linear tangent's what we want. Now, here's the problem with linear tangents. It doesn't really do what we want it to do in this mode. What we want is weighted tangents. And we're just going to get rid of the tangents. That's what we want to do. We're just going to get them all in here. Now, there's no tangent, meaning that we have a sharp in, sharp out. There's no deceleration or acceleration happening without that tangent. So it's just going to bounce right up out of there. And what that's going to give us is a sharp impact. You see the ball come in. Bounce. Here, let's slow that down. Comes in, bounce, slows to a stop. Bam. Now, um, 
we can do this, you know, one after the other. So for example, the next bounce would be like right here. There's the M key again, and we're going to accomplish the same thing. Oop. This is important. Make sure that's flat. We don't want to, we want to make sure it's the same value for each one. And this is why keyframing first is important. We want to get the frames out of the way first. So uh, we just want the shot at 10 seconds. 10 seconds. So we'll have the second bounce here, M, second bounce here, maybe a little bit less distance that time there. And then we'll just put a bunch of them really close together. Really straightforward. And then right in the middle of each one, we'll have another bounce. Another bounce. Another bounce. And we'll just go ahead and drag these up where we feel it's appropriate. Make sure, just you know, they're slowly descending over time. And we're going to have to zoom in in this area here. That, and that, and did it again. I don't know why. Oh, the shot's so long. That's why. This is why you want to cut the shots before you go into the keyframe editor. All right. So once again. Weighted tangents, shift, middle mouse, drag, weighted tangents, and we can just use the hot key of seven, middle mouse, oops, shift, set the tangent, middle mouse, drag, seven, just tangent, middle mouse, drag, zoom in here, seven, select, middle mouse, drag, and this guy. All right, and we're going to select all of these here, make them linear, make them weighted, and just drag these guys on in. On in, guys. We don't we don't need your tangents; they're unnecessary. And you know we're getting into one and two keyframes down here, so you notice that the shape doesn't really change no matter what I do. And uh, so we don't need to worry about that too much. Okay. Oh, we forgot to do it here. And there we go. We have our bouncing ball. And again, I, I refined this animation more for the example shot. But this is pretty much what I did. Um, so if I scrub through here, I did that. And then I added some rotation value in there. So I encourage you to experiment, play around with it. I don't want the video to last too much longer. So I'd rather talk about more advanced and, and different things in here. But that, that gives you an idea of what keys are, how to manipulate them, and what you should expect to do with them. So try this out. If you like the video, let me know. Uh, and I'll make more. All right, guys. I appreciate everything. And I'll see you guys on Reddit.